Your D&D players walk into the room and you describe to them the details of the puzzle laid out before them. In order to progress further in the dungeon, they must solve the puzzle. The barbarian, rogue, and cleric all look to the wizard who smiles, picks up a D20 and says, I'd like to make an investigation check to solve the puzzle and open the way forward. You, the dungeon master, panic. You spent three hours creating that puzzle. You didn't Google it. You didn't use any puzzles from Lair Magazine. You beat your head against a wall until that puzzle popped out. And now your player would like to solve it in a few seconds with a die roll. This is the dilemma most DMs face at one point or another, isn't it? When should you allow your players to use dice to overcome a challenge in the game? And when should you make them use their brains as players to overcome the challenge? This is commonly referred to as challenging the player versus challenging the characters or role play versus role play. So today we are going to deep dive into this and talk about when you should use one method and when you should use the other. Before we jump in, if you're sometimes frustrated that the only things to reward your players with in the game is gold, magic items, and more gold, we recently released our new rewards and recognition system in Lair Magazine number 17, the May 2022 issue, which is now available to all DM Lair patrons. We created 16 different categories of rewards you can give your players and scaled them according to the tiers of play. So whether your players are level four or level 15, our rewards and recognition system helps you determine how much their reward should be. Player Magazine also contains lots of other 5e compatible Dungeon Master resources you can use in your games, such as adventures, traps, puzzles, and new monsters. Learn more and become a DM Lair patron at the link below to get a new issue of Lair Magazine every month. Okay, so the standard reasoning for rolling dice and challenging the characters and not the players is that since their PC is attempting something in the game, success or failure should be based on the PC's skills and abilities, not the player's skills and abilities. So for example, if you have a character jumping across a chasm, would you make the barbarian's player attempt that in real life to see whether they succeed or not? Or if they're sneaking quietly through the forest, should everyone go out to the woods so the players can show how silently they can move? Or you're picking up every object, you're reading spell scrolls, you're trying to understand the orc language. These are all things that we do in the game that we use the character's abilities and dice rolls to resolve. And many things in the game do indeed work this way and should work this way. We roll dice and resolve the vast majority of situations using PC skills and ability modifiers plus dice rolls. So when players must use their brains, say, to solve a riddle, many may object and demand to be allowed to roll dice and add a modifier to solve it. And are we as dungeon masters then being unreasonable in asking players to use their brains? No, I don't think we are, not at all. You see, there are many things in the game that rely on player brains and not character skill. Take combat, swinging swords and casting spells and things like that are based on PC skill. But what about tactics? Who decides where to move, which enemy to focus fire on, and which PC ability or spell to use? The players do that, of course. We don't do ability checks to determine those things based on a PC's combat experience. The players decide. Take social situations. Sure, there may be a persuasion or intimidation check, but many times what the player decides to say is extremely important too. Many times there is never a check and the outcome is 100% dependent upon what the player decides to have their character say. How about the classic RPG decision-making moment? You know, where the group sits around the table discussing the merits of choice A, B, and C and deliberates about what to do next. Do you use the character's abilities to make dice rolls and checks to determine what the group does? Or do the players get to decide? Now, of course, good players will be role-playing those decisions, doing what they think their characters would do, but it remains. The players decide, not the dice. So what is my point? Obviously, that both methods are used. But more than just that, if we boil everything in the game down to dice rolls with appropriate modifiers based on character skill, we remove the human element. We remove your player's brains from the equation. They would no longer really need to think. Everything that happens would be determined by character skill and dice. And does that sound like a fun game to you? Does that even sound like a game at all? So why then is there a balance of things determined by character skill and the dice and other things that are determined by players using their own brains? The answer is engagement. You want your players to be engaged in the game. That is actively interested in it, paying attention and enjoying themselves. And that engagement has a root in something else 
control. Human beings like control. We enjoy the feeling of having control over what happens. So should we then give our players 100% control if that's what they really like? Like no dice rolling at all? Just they get to decide everything that happens in the game? We just turn the game into a narrative event where we go around the table and just decide what will happen and make an awesome epic story out of it? No, because that would fail too. It might be fun once or twice, but it's missing a classic element of game design. Challenge. Human beings also like to be challenged. This is one reason, for instance, that new jobs are exciting, but once you've been at a company 10 years, you are bored out of your mind and hate working there. We need to have some control, but we also need to be challenged. And of course, we need feedback that lets us know how we're doing. When you drop to zero hit points, when your cleric in full plate sucks at jumping, but you try anyway. When your wizard successfully counters fireball spells and things like that. Probably getting a little bit off topic now, so we're just gonna kind of let that sit there. But the point is, in Dungeons & Dragons, to have a full, rewarding game experience, we need to have a balance, whereby outcomes are sometimes determined by character skill, plus randomness, the dice, and sometimes determined by player brains and decisions. By the way, if you're finding this information valuable or just like the sweet, sweet smell of bacon, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm. Let me know how you balance brains versus versus dice in your games. Okay, so how do you decide which to use? Now, most of the time, you, the dungeon master, don't really need to. For the most part, which to use, brains or dice, role play or role play, is baked into the game system. Like The rules literally tell us how to resolve the it. The players decide what their characters do in combat, but the dice rolls and PC's skill determine whether the sword swing hits, how much damage the spell does, and things like that. And, and that really just brings us to the gray areas, and the areas that players are going to argue with you about. And I would say for these that it is up to you, the game master, how you'd like to handle them. Also, important point here, when players argue that they should be able to solve a riddle with an investigation check, recognize it's probably not a rational argument, at least not really. Instead, it's an emotional argument that resorts to reason. Really, the player just doesn't want the hassle of dealing with the riddle or puzzle because they just don't like them. So they want an easier solution, which would be a quick die roll that makes the puzzle or riddle go away. Of course, that denies the fact that there might be other players at the table that do like puzzles and riddles and do want to use their brains to figure them out and would feel gypped and cheated if a simple die roll makes the puzzle or riddle go away. I suggest making it clear to your players how you'll handle any gray areas and puzzles and riddles and remembering stuff the players don't take notes on are probably the most common instances of this. Now, if you have decided to use ability checks and dice rolls to decide something, you might be asking, should I require just one check or multiple checks? Now, I would say for something simple or that involves a single effort at a moment in time, that's probably just one check. For instance, trying to pick a lot. However, for something more complex or that involves an ongoing effort over a period of time, that's better resolved with a skill challenge. For instance, trying to escape a crumbling castle before it crushes you would be a skill challenge. And I'll be talking more about skill challenges in a future video. And in Lair Magazine number 18, the June 2020 issue, my team and I will be publishing the skill challenge system that we use. So, you know, DM Lair patrons have that to look forward to. Well, that's great, Luke, but what do you do? Okay, okay, I will address the two most common gray areas and how I handle them. Riddles and puzzles. Players use their brains. I allow ability checks, usually perception and investigation, to get clues. However, solving it and figuring out what they do to get past it is up to the players. Now, my reasoning goes a little something like this. If I'm spending time creating these, then they won't be resolved in a die roll or two. The players need to figure them out using their own brains, assisted by some ability checks to get clues. I mean, otherwise, I'm just gonna stop spending time making puzzles and riddles and just literally tell my players something like this. Uh, yeah, so you come upon a puzzle that you must solve to unlock the door. However, I'm not going to describe the puzzle to you because it's kind of irrelevant. Someone please just make an investigation check with advantage as you all try to solve the puzzle. <laughs> Because if the details of the puzzle are relevant and it's gonna get solved by an investigation check and be done with, then why would I even consider making the details of the puzzle? But then not telling the details of the puzzle at the game table just seems absolutely lame and dumb. So I probably would just never use puzzles or riddles because it's just pointless. Okay, the next one, remembering stuff. 
This is a great one. I mean, you, you, everybody, everybody has had a player say something like this. I don't remember the name of the NPC, but my super smart wizard should. Can I just make a check? But we know, Dungeon Masters know, players often don't take detailed notes. So this might be a common occurrence. I must say though, I love players who do take good notes. My approach on this is that I'm usually not stingy with important information. If players don't remember minor stuff that won't really affect things too much, I don't don't help them. I just let them flail about and it's rather entertaining for everyone when they do so. But if it's something important to the game, I'm just going to tell them. No dice rolls or intelligence checks are required. I just tell them. <sighs> My reasoning, okay, I'm I'm not running a ninth grade English class where I expect students to take notes. It's a D&D &D game. If players don't take notes, whatever. If something is important, I'll remind them. If it's not important, then they'll suffer. That's life. Click on the screen now to learn more about our rewards and recognition system, or to become a DM Layer patron, get an issue of Layer Magazine every month, and play D&D &D with me. And until next time, there's nothing really wrong with asking your players to use their brains. Really, there isn't.